Mondays, you might be wondering, wait a minute, it's not Monday, therefore it's not a magic Monday, it's Thursday. Hmm, what's happening? That's right, we've added a bonus video to our weekly schedule. Now, keep in mind, this isn't going to be every week. Um, it's going to be kind of like a bonus Thursday sort of thing. We call it Hooray Thursday. So we say that because it's only a bonus. It's not going to be every week. It's going to be occasionally. However, I do feel like there are going to be a lot of them in the coming weeks just because we have a lot of footage. We just got back from Disney, obviously, so our Magic Mondays have been taken up with our footage from Walt Disney World, and that's going to be going on for a few months. So uh, we wanted to dedicate an extra day of the week just in case we come up with a sit down video or like today is going to be a haul, so stay tuned to that. Um, but I also just got back from Dayton, Disneyana and I didn't want to interrupt our Walt Disney World footage because I know you guys were really looking forward to that. So we just wanted to set aside an extra day during the week so that if you are anticipating any other videos from us, that's where you'll find them is on Thursday. Hooray Thursday! So stay tuned to the channel for extra stuff as well as tune in every Monday for our Walt Disney World vlogs. But like I mentioned, I am doing a haul video today because with Dayton Disneyana there was lots of shopping and prizes and stuff like that. So I came back from Dayton, Ohio with a ton of stuff. I've got a whole bunch of bags here. This is by no means my most glamorous setting or, you know, look because I spent an entire day in the car yesterday and I'm still recovering. But right now it's just kind of, you know, late afternoon and I need to get this stuff put away. <laughs> so stay tuned if you want to see all the good stuff that I picked up. There's lots of vintage Disney as well as some new collectibles. Enjoy! For those of you that are wondering what Dayton Disneyana is, it's kind of like a convention sort of thing for uh, Disney fanatics to get together and uh, people sell collectibles, there's lots of pin trading which was right up my alley and there's also guest speakers with panels and things like that. I also attended a costume contest. So if you're interested to see what that was like, stay tuned to Hooray Thursday and I will be adding that in the coming weeks. I did take a lot of footage so I don't know if I have to put it up in parts or not, but we shall see. I know I did capture a lot of fun stuff. When I bought my ticket for Dayton Disney Anna, I bought an early bird, which allowed me to go in, I think it was an hour and a half before the general public and do shopping and there was raffles and stuff like that. So I'll first show you the free items I got, being an early bird and winning some raffles. So first off, I got this aerial bag and I do believe this bag is from Tokyo Disneyland just because it does say King Triton presents on it. I'm pretty sure they're really big on King Triton over there. So, um, if you're familiar with Tokyo Disney, let me know. Do you think this is from Tokyo? Because I think it is. Which would be really cool because I really want to go to Tokyo. But, um, I did touch on what is actually in this bag. In the vlog, there's lots of stuff in here, so to pull out each individual piece would be a bit nuts and this video would take forever. So, if you're interested in seeing what's in this bag, stay tuned because uh, this will be in the vlog coming up. Next were some of the raffle prizes I won. First, I got um, the chance to choose two Disneyana magazines as well as a beanie that the guy was offering. Um, they were seasonal, but they were still very cute. Um, I won this uh, little Easter Mickey Mouse, so I can put him away and put him out when it is time for Peter Cottontail to come around. So, really nice. And then from the same vendor, uh, I was able to choose two Disneyana magazines. I'll be honest, I hadn't heard of these before. But uh, it's basically books full of um, information about collectibles and stuff. So you can kind of get a, a look at pins and I think there's like figures and stuff like that. A little bit of information about artists I imagine. But uh, as you can see, I chose one that was about Tokyo Disneyland because I really want to go there. That is my dream park. And then this one I picked because it had Genie on the cover. A genie cookie jar. Why not? So the other prize I won was kind of like a, a combo pack of, of goodies. Uh, one of the items was something I'm going to save for Katie's birthday, but this was another one of the items. I got a 
First Order Stormtrooper Bobblehead, Funko Pop. I don't have any Star Wars Funkos yet. I was scared to get into them because there's so many. But yeah, I think I'm gonna try and not buy them all now. So other than the other item that I'm saving for Katie, I did also get a five pin pack of the Best Friends Mystery Pack series. Again, if you wanna see that, I opened it on camera just because I was doing pin trading while I was in Dayton and I really could use the pins at that time. So I would have opened it here on camera, but uh, I really wanted it for pin trading. So I did open it on camera there, so that'll be included in the vlog footage. Sorry to keep you waiting. But that being said, I'm sure you are looking forward to some pins, so let's move on to some of the pins I got. First off, I did a lot of trading. This is my keeper bag, very full. Oh, actually this here I can pull out because I bought this, but. I got this little beauty for a quarter. It is a button with Mickey saying that I'm a world showcase traveler and it's dedicated to Epcot. And I got this in honor of one of the big adventures that Katie and I had while we were in Disney. We did conquer the world showcase, so I felt this was appropriate. But going back to the pin bag, this is all full of trades. These are all the trades I made this weekend. I think I traded about, I think about 15 to 20 pins. So uh, I have lots to go through, but I feel like I keep letting you guys down saying you gotta wait, but there's so many to go through. Again, it would just take forever to go through them. So Katie and I are going to do a pin trading haul. We have shown pins in our shopping hauls, but we really wanted to show a dedicated video just to the haul and trading. Katie's will be all the trades that she did in Walt Disney World and mine will be a little blend of both. Most of them are gonna be from Dayton though because I did some hefty trading in Dayton. <laughs> but the pins I will show you are the pins that I purchased. First I will show you the pins that I bought for trading and I will put in a shot of some close-ups of everything just because you know I can't see how everything is in focus so first off I have this Tsum Tsum pin. It's like a little stackable slider, so they just kind of go up and down. We've got Mickey, Dale, Chip, Donald, Minnie, Daisy, Marie, and Pluto. I so, thought that was a cute trader to add to my book. Then I grabbed this genie pin. Uh, I believe this is retired in the parks because when we were down there I didn't, I don't think I saw it. I did see it on t-shirts, but I can't recall seeing it on pins, but I do have this one in my collection already and I thought it would be a good trader. Next I grabbed this really cute Beauty and the Beast pin. It's got like little um, hinges, it's almost like one of those best friend necklaces, but uh, it doesn't separate, but it looks, it gives the illusion of two pins and uh, it's got Belle on one side and Beast on the other. And this next one I bought with intention to trade with my roommate because she admitted to me that she is now going to start collecting this character. But I got Hank the Septipus from Finding Dory. But she said she wants to start collecting Hank and I usually like a lot of the pins she has because she's been trading for quite a while. So I figured this would be a good way to get into her pin book. <laughs> Next I have two pins that I bought for myself. This is a Rescue Rangers pin of Chip and Dale. And uh, I just think it's really cute how Dale is looking through the magnifying glass. And uh, yeah, it's just a very sweet little pin. I did actually want to buy this one in Walt Disney World and I forgot up until like getting on the bus and I went, crap, I didn't buy that pin. So thankfully I got this at a really good price. I think it worked out to be about $4. And uh, I'm gonna be adding this to my 90s cartoon collection. Oh boy, this next one, I think might be my biggest purchase from Dayton. Yeah, it totally is. It was the most expensive thing I bought. And once again, like my Pandora Charm in Walt Disney World, it's technically the smallest, even though it's still quite big. Um, I didn't really even know this pin existed. And then my roommate, Susan, pointed out, hey, you know your side collection? I think I found something for you. She pulled me off to the side, flipped open the page of the pin book, and I just about fainted at how pretty this is. <sighs> It is a WDI Emperor's New Group pin. It is limited edition 250 and it's a spinner. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I 
don't have any pins like this. Like this, this is the biggest pin I own. Um, it is the lowest edition I own, and the fact that it's for a collection that I have an impossible time finding things in just made me really, really happy. Now, it was a bit of a splurge, it was $35, but it's still fairly good considering what kind of pin it is. Um, original price on it was $18.95, but the other thing I need to make note of is in order to get this pin originally, you have to be a Disney Imagineer. So, I would say the value goes up immediately just for that fact. So, for you purists out there, I'm sorry, but I am going to hang it on the board naked. So. <laughs> I might as well take it out and show you how it looks up close. Arr! So on the frame, you've got Kronk, Yzma, and Pacha. And then it's got the 15th anniversary for Emperor's New Groove on the bottom. But this little centerpiece moves. So you've got Emperor Kuzco on one side, and Nama Kuzco on the other. I just think it is such a cool pin. And as much of a splurge that it was, I'm really happy that I got it. Yay! So that's everything for pins, other than the haul that I'll be doing later. Next is another Funko, but this one I actually did purchase. I've been looking for this particular one and have had the hardest time, and I was so glad that I got it during the early bird, because when I went back in the afternoon, they were all gone. a little depressed stitch. <laughs> I don't know why, but for the Stitch Funko figures, I feel like a lot of them look really weird. I don't know if it's his teeth or his eyes, but I feel like this was the best looking one. I just, I've had a Lilo for well over a year now. I felt that she needed a stitch, but I just couldn't find one that I liked. But this one, I love. So, again, purists look away. Time to break him out. I just love that he's also sitting. He'll probably stand up a lot better on my shelf because I find Funkos are really top heavy and they're always falling over. So he'll be going up with my Funkos on my shelf. I'm just making you purists mad all over the place. So if you are like all about mint condition, this video probably isn't for you. I'm all about taking things out of the box and playing with things and stuff like that just because I'm a big kit. So this has been taken out of the package so I do apologize but I couldn't find this anywhere in Canada and I really just wanted to read it so that I could get two and three because I have access to those I just don't have number one. So I got this Marvel Haunted Mansion comic with the variant cover by Scotty Young. Um, I don't know if all of the issues have variant covers, I imagine a lot of them do, but there were quite a few different variant covers. Um, I just happened to grab the cheapest one because I just really wanted to read it. And if you are able to get the Haunted Mansion comics, they are quite good. Uh, the artwork's really nice. I like the look of Madame Leota in it. Um, this artwork on the front isn't what it looks like on the inside, so don't let that throw you off. But I do know um, if you aren't able to get, say, issue one or a couple of the issues, I believe in September they are releasing a book with all five involved, so keep an eye out for that. Another prize I won was actually during the costume contest, so I will show you that now. Hopefully it will fit in the frame because it's quite large. But when I won for my Mary Poppins costume, they thought that I was missing my carpet bag, so they gave me this great big Disneyland duffel bag with the custom Disney and a fan club logo on it. So that was quite nice. <laughs> It worked out because I had all this stuff that I had to put in it, so um, the people that I was carpooling with were laughing that I had more stuff in the back than they probably did, but I'm a sucker for merchandise. I think to wrap everything up, I'm going to show you a lot of the vintage stuff that I bought. Um, I say it's vintage because it's probably over 20 years old. This first item was, to me, worth the whole trip in itself. This magic mirror is something I had when I was a kid. It was one of my favorite toys, and I don't have batteries in it at the moment, I'm very sorry that I don't, but um, when it works, you push this little button here on the bottom, the characters will show up in the mirror and talk to you, and it's very cute. 
but uh, there's a bit of a story behind this. I will show you another item that leads up to this story, so hold on. I was at a table where they were selling a lot of old like Hallmark ornaments, things like that, and they had this little mixed bag, little Ziploc bag, full of Aladdin characters, like Genie, Prince Ali, Abu, and Jasmine. But uh, it was, I just saw it sitting there, and it was only $5, and I'm like, you know what, it's not Christmas, but I can put those away. So, I just thought they would be cute on the tree when the time comes. So I bought those, and then I, I was told that I could go around both sides of the table to make sure I look at everything. And then I'm like, okay, I've seen everything, and I crouched down to get to my backpack to pull up my wallet to pay for the ornaments. And then, out of the corner of my eye, I notice, I'll kind of give a little hint as to what it looked like. There was a little pile, and then the mirror was just sticking out just like that. Keeping in mind, this was one of my favorite toys when I was a kid. I knew exactly what that was, and I said, excuse me, but is that item over there sold, or what's the story? He says, oh no, it just hasn't been put out yet. But you're welcome to take a look, and I pull it out, and I'm just like, and uh, I was like, how much is it? And then I flipped it over and I saw that there was $10. I'm like, yeah, I guess. It is my childhood. And I was thinking, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll spend the $10 on it. And he goes, yeah, it says 10, but I'll give it to you for five. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like I said, this little beauty was worth the trip in itself, worth the 10 hour drive. And I was just very, very happy to have it. Then, beside the mirror, I saw this pack of Aladdin pens. I asked him what he wanted for those because I was very interested and he says, well, you know, they're pens, they're old pens and I feel bad adding a price to it just in case they don't work. So here you go. So let's just say that was one of my favorite tables. <laughs> but those were a couple of the good finds I found as far as vintage things, but I do have a couple more, so hold tight. First off, the item that is in this box was my very first purchase of the morning. You'll see in the vlog that um, I basically beeline right for it. I actually had spotted it through the crack in the door the night before because we were trying to kind of sneak a peek as to what was in the showroom. But when I looked through the crack of the door, this guy was right dead center in the crack of the door. So I was like, you and I, we are going to meet tomorrow morning and I'm going to find out what you are. So it is this beautiful little porcelain genie and at first I thought he was just a figure, that he was pretty, he'd look good on a shelf, but then when I walked up I turned it over and I saw this little desk right here and knew exactly what he did. He's a music box! Got a little switch on the side here, so when I'm tired of listening to the same, you know, five seconds of song, I can just switch it off, which is pretty cool. But he was a whopping ten dollars. Yeah, had to have. Now going from my very first purchase to my very last purchase before leaving Dayton. On Saturday, I had seen this item and I didn't bother to ask how much it was because I figured it was going to be like seventy-five bucks. And I had definitely spent the majority of my money by 11 o'clock, so I knew there was no way I was going to get it. And I happened to be talking to my mom, I told her what it was, and she's like, oh yeah, you've always wanted one of those. Uh, how much is it? I'm like, I don't know, I'm guessing like 75 bucks. And she's like, mm, yeah, I can't send you that. I'm like, yeah, I figured. <laughs> so I kind of just dashed my dreams of buying it. I didn't ask my mom for the money, but she did want to help me out. But on Sunday, I went back down. I figured it was going to be long gone just because of what it was. And it was still there. And I asked how much it was. This was at the Theme Park Connection table. So big shout out to Theme Park Connection for helping me find one of my dream toys. But I've always wanted a Buzz Lightyear. And this is the original 1995 Buzz Lightyear. Still in the box. A good 20 years old. Um, original Tim Allen voice, 
That being said, because it's so old, the batteries are dead, but I just love that it's the original. Uh, I did actually want to buy a Buzz while I was down in Disney, and I'm so glad I didn't because it would have been double the price. I got this for $15. So happy. Um, but it's just cool to see the original box, all the little trigger points on him, and yes. My life is complete now. I have my Buzz Lightyear. I've wanted one ever since I was seven years old, and it's just so cool to finally have them. And one other item I can show you, um, I can show you now, it is a Tokyo Disneyland shopping bag. And it's got all the characters from Mickey's Philheart Magic on it, including Donald, who is going through a little bit of chaos there. But I really like it because it's very big. It comes with a zipper. So I feel like it's gonna be really handy for grocery shopping and stuff like that. And finally, if you watch the vlogs, you will see that I have a little run-in with Disney in Ohio, and we had a great time. We, had, we visited quite a bit. We didn't vlog the whole thing because we just really wanted to catch up and get to know each other. But uh, I gave them a little Canadian care package. So before I left on Sunday, they brought one for me as well. So it's this little aerial bag. These lollipops from Disney World were given to me on Saturday, but then they were generous and brought more goodies the next day. Things that aren't, you know, local to Canadians, like pork rinds. Their local chip manufacturer. <laughs> um, Mike Sells? Mike Sells. <laughs> and I like that their chips are called Groovy. And then these are, I believe, an Ohio specialty chocolate, Esther Price. Of course, no goodie bag from Ohio is complete without Skyline Chili. So we've got original and spaghetti chili. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a good time trying those out, I think. But I think this pretty much wraps up everything I got in Dayton, Disneyana. As you can tell, in a day and two hours, I got a lot of stuff. But I'm definitely thinking I'm gonna go next year. So if you guys are interested in learning more about Dayton, Disneyana, stay tuned to our channel because I've got a vlog and uh, they'll probably be posting information in the coming months. I'm pretty sure that it got so large this year that they have to change venues, so it's just gonna get bigger and bigger, guys. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed this haul. Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe because we're gonna be adding a lot more Disney vlogs in the near future, as well as some Hooray Thursdays. So have a great weekend, guys.